tell you what it's time to build the 302. Okay, new episode. There's the lone push rod, the only one that fit. But before we get started on technical stuff, Steve, what is the date today? Today is the last day of January. January, January 31st. 2009. That's it. Now, our weather is not bad today for a little engine building. Let's just show what kind of day we have. We have got a glorious day in Southern California for some Project 302. So glorious that I am wearing shorts. You gotta love this. Southern California at its finest. Okay, Toothmeister. Today is, what do we have? What did we bring today? Oh, we bought some push rods. We've got new push rods, and you said these are works of art. Oh, these are marvelous. We've got to model these. Okay, let's get out in the sunlight where we can take a look. All right. These are tool steel 4130 push rods that are heat treated. That's what produces this wonderful black oxide finish. And in the world of a tool maker, these little guys are works of art. Really? Oh, to produce such a wonderful satin finish during the uh, heat treating process is a sign of an extremely well controlled process. These push rods are also hardened. I imagine uh, they're probably around the Rockwell 40, somewhere in that area. The Rockwell 40. And the push rods are probably the uh, unsung hero of a V8 engine. Cool. No one pays any attention to these, but they're pretty darn important. Overcoming the valve spring at the rate of about 50 times a second, this poor little push rod is exerting or dealing with a load of probably uh, 400 pounds on and off at about 50 times a second. Wow. So it's important it doesn't flex or bend. Oh, cool. Well, These we'll... are wonderful little pieces. Right on. We'll compare it to the stock one. You'll see the difference. Okay, what other tools did you bring today? I noticed that um, you, had, you had a new tool... And we'll look at that later. Something about the distributor. We're going to prime the uh, prime the oil pump. Prime the oil pump. Right. After the motor is installed and before we fire it up, when it's all full of oil, we will uh, spin the oil pump, priming up and pressurizing the oil system of the entire engine before we fire it. Okay. Cool. And you also brought two bottles of something. Oh, that's important. Let me. What? Let's let's see that. What'd you bring? These are sanity savers. Really? Is there a special brand of sanity saver? Trader Joe's. Trader We have here uh, a generic Blackhawk, an Irish stout, a wonderful brew for a day like today. Excellent. Uh, these are going to be tasty. And a day it is. Let's get started. Indeed. Okay, you're holding the uh, stock push rod that we had and the new one. And the new one. And look at the difference of workmanship and craftsmanship. A single billet piece that's nicely machined instead of a piece of tubing with uh, hardened balls spot welded on. Excellent. Very nice piece. Too bad they're going to be hidden. Indeed. Okay, what do you got going here, Steve? All right, we're doing our uh, sanity test for the length of these push rods. And these are the, this is the intake and the exhaust for the longest push rods that we needed, right? The real problem ones. That's correct. And if we have the right length push rod, it's zero lash, and that's where we're at now. The push rods are a little snug. We should probably get about a one and a half turns on this nut before it hits its seat. Okay. Let's just give that a test. I'll watch at nine sixteenths. There's a turn and a quarter. Perfect. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What did you just say? Perfect. I love that I word. I love this. So this is good news. So we did good, huh? I think so.
I have been watching a lot of video clips on YouTube of 302s that have been built and you know guys show them running in their car. Uh -huh. I do hear a lot of clacking going on. A little noisy. This could be part of the problem. Yeah. So we're going to have one of the few quiet As it should be. 302s. A hydraulic camshaft motor shouldn't really be noisy. This is excellent. All right, we will continue on. Okay, all those rods are in. These are the last two. And what have we found, Mr. Toothmeister, camshaft mad scientist? It looks like the length of our push rods is what we need. It's putting us within the adjustability range of the lifters. So, I think we're good to go. We're good to button this guy up. Cool. We can start putting the jewelry on. Yeah, we can put the jewelry on. Okay, Tooth, this is a good sight. We have torqued down all of the rockers. The valve train is complete. It's starting to look like a motor. I can hear it already. And you're feeling good? Feeling good. All right, well, let's celebrate with some lunch. What do we got? Liquid lunch, the yeah. breakfast of champions. Of course, an Irish-style stout. Cool. Excellent. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Cheers. Aha. Uh -huh. Ooh, that's pretty tasty. Oh, yeah. Could be just a little cooler, but it's all right. Thank you for bringing those. With a day like today, you have to have a stout. Yeah, let's, let's look at that day just one more time out here. Now, can't beat this. The rest of the country is in... How should we say sub zero? This is absolutely perfect. Sorry, Marianne. Now, which is that? Which that? Which is that peak that looks like a volcano? Okay. Is that San Antonio or Ontario no, no, Peak? No. It's either San Antonio. I'm sorry. It's either Ontario Peak or Cucamonga Peak. Okay. And I think that is Cucamonga Peak. And uh, you That's hiked up there before, yeah, right? I've been to the top of that. With old Bill Heavenston, we hit all the peaks. We've been on San Antonio several times, Cucamonga Peak, Ontario Peak. Back on our heyday, we, we made it a point to hit all the peaks. Did you spend the night up there? Uh-huh. And uh, Cucamonga Peak, that is one MF to get to. Really? Uh-huh. That is a hike. Now, how long ago did you do that? Oh, back in our late 20s and early 30s. What was it like up there? See wildlife or anything? On occasion. It's just very... Desolate outdoors, trees, snow. Spending the night was cool? Absolutely. We enjoyed that. Right on. All right. Back to engine work. Okay. So we're starting to uh, put some eye candy on it. There's the intake manifold. Edelbrock dual plane intake manifold. And uh, we're looking, we're doing a test fit. And Steve's looking at that little gap right there, which could be a source of oil leaks. But you're going to do what? We're going to fill that with RTV silicone. Okay, cool. So our test fit will give us an idea how big of a bead to put down to fill that gap. So it's a little better than an eighth of an inch. We'll lay down a nice big fat bead and schluck that guy right on down. All right, let's... Quickie glue job. Doing finger painting? Finger painting, boy. Adult finger painting. Gooping up silicone on there so it seals nice and tight. When I'm done, I'm going to hang it on your refrigerator. All right. Yeah, a little glue. This also helps hold the gasket in place a bit. In an area that always is a problem are the water jackets due to the corrosion. Uh -huh. Sometimes that's asking a lot for the gasket to seal, so we give it a little bit of... A little bit of goo. This is a crucial bead of silicone, right? Yeah, right in the old leak areas there. Really. And you want to lay down a nice fat bead for that gap. Careful. <laughs> No 
never did like the smell of that. Vinegar? Acetic acid? Is that what that is? Yep. Acetic acid. I really want to pay particular attention right in there. Really get it in your good. And we got to put that same thick bead on the other side, and we're making progress, huh? Indeed we are. Well, my original plan was to have this motor and car over to Griff's place in November. Which year? <laughs> Which year? Time? Yeah, I got time. <laughs> no hurry. Good thing Griff wasn't counting on it, huh? Uh, I haven't really talked to him for a little while. I've been talking to Casey, so I'm uppercase, so i got to uh, make contact with Griff to let him know that we are making progress. I'll send him this video clip. There you go. Then he'll know you're serious. Yeah. Since Sherman, the guy who built my transmission, called me last night. That's a hot rodder for you. Yep, just to check to see how we're doing. That's a hot rodder. Okay, you hold in your hand a gooped up, ready to be installed, good looking, good looking intake manifold. Brand spank a new piece of aluminum. And what does the intake manifold do there, Toothmeister? directs the air fuel charge into the cylinders. Okay, this side's looking pretty good. Do I have enough goop on this side? Nice. What was that? Nice. <laughs> I'm having a great day. Mm, yes, nice. Okay, Tooth, excellent job. We've got the intake manifold on and all torqued down nice and all sealed up. Beautiful. It's looking nice. Next is we're going to put the uh, the vibration damper on. We're going to put the balancer on the uh, motor. I was explaining to Rob the interference fit of the balancer to the crank snout. The balancers will fit very tight to the crank snout so that it mechanically couples to the crankshaft and the reason why is as the cylinders fire exerting their load upon the crankshaft the crankshaft tends to twist so it has a lot of torsional twisting going on and if we don't do something to uh, dampen that twisting the crankshaft will break and that's the job of the harmonic balancer the balancer is a hub with an inertia ring. This outer ring is what they call the inertia ring. And we can't see it here because Rob's got it all painted up nice, but there's a little gap of rubber in here. So the torsional twisting that takes place in the crankshaft, this outer inertia ring helps dampen that motion, preventing the crankshaft from breaking. But for this whole thing to work, it has to be mechanically coupled very tightly to the crankshaft snout. Alright, let's put that baby on the snout. Put her on the snout. We've got her cleaned up nice. Now uh, we need to get a little bit of lube in the seal and a little lube on the uh, snout and in essence crank this guy on. Okay, well we're stopped today. We put the old valve covers on just to seal up the motor. Uh, the damper's on. We need to get a, a thermostat and a radiator hose neck for there. We're stopped because we have the need to buy bolts for the exhaust manifolds and bolts for the water pump. So we're stopped because we didn't have fasteners to go ahead. That's cool. All in all a good day. Got I'll the important stuff up. done. Excellent. Manifolds on, all sealed up nice. Looking like an engine. All right, cool. Till next time.
while the boys will be back, now you're part of the crew. See you next time on Project 302.